We're going to be looking in this video a little bit at how to graph a piecewise defined function. So the first thing we need, of course, is a piecewise defined function to graph. And let's try this example. f of x equals 2 if negative 5 is less than x is less than negative 4. 3x plus 1 if negative 4 is less than or equal to x is less than negative 1. x squared if x is between 0 if x is greater than 0. Okay, so we're going to graph this function. First thing we need, of course, to draw a graph is some axes to graph it on. So there's a y-axis. There's an x-axis. Need to label the scale, and as you can see, we need to get all the way down to negative 5. And on this axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, now each piece of this function tells us something about this graph. So this first piece is the horizontal line y equals 2. So between x equals negative 5 and x equals negative 4, we're going to be looking at this line, negative 2. But we don't want the whole line. We just want the part between negative 5 and 4. And the part between negative 5 and 4 is just right here, between negative 5 and negative 4, right there. So that's all we're keeping from this line. The rest of the green line, you can go ahead and erase it. I'm going to leave it there just so we can see what we've been doing. The next piece we're going to draw, I'm going to do in yellow. And this is the equation y equals 3x plus 1. So that would have a y-intercept of 1. And we're going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 1 to get that point. I can also go down 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 1 to get that point so that we draw this line. So this is what that line would look like. But again, we only want the part between negative 4 and negative 1. So we're going to come back through here. And negative 4, this looks like it's right around there. And negative 1, that's going to be right around here. And let's see, the negative 4 should be a closed circle because it says or equal to. But this is strictly less than, so that's an open circle there when x is negative 1. And we're just keeping this part. And you can go ahead and erase the rest of the yellow line. Again, I'm going to leave it just so that we can um, see what we're doing as we move on. We have one more piece to graph. I'm going to do this one in uh, light blue, I think. And this is y equals x squared. Now y equals x squared is not a line. y equals x squared is a parabola that I would normally graph by doing this. There's my three points for my parabola, and I would draw it something like that. But again, we're not keeping the whole parabola. We're just keeping the part where x is greater than 0. So to do that, we're going to start at 0. And that gets an open circle because it says greater than. And we're going to keep the part to the right, the part where x is greater than 0. Okay, now that's our graph. Uh, it has these three pieces. You'll notice there's a gap right here. It's okay to have a gap. Most of the examples you see out of most of the textbooks don't have gaps there because most piecewise defined functions have a domain of all real numbers, or at least many of them do. Uh, but this one doesn't. It has a gap in the domain. In fact, if we were to look at the domain, nobody asked us to except I made up the problem, so now I'm asking us to. The domain of this function starts at negative 5. It does not include negative 5, so it has a parenthesis there. And it goes to negative 4. But then it also includes negative 4. So initially, it might look like this. Union with 0 to infinity. 
But because this union actually intersects, we can simplify this to from negative 5 to negative 1, union with 0 to infinity. So that's the domain of this. And as long as we're talking about things like that, we might as well look at the range as well. The range of this function, and again, nobody asked, but you can see, uh-oh, I don't know what that value is. So let's go ahead and make our graph a little bit better by finding out what that value is. So if I found f of negative 4, f of negative 4 will be 3 times negative 4 plus 1. That's negative 12 plus 1. That's negative 11. So this point right here is actually the point negative 4 negative 11. But that means the range, therefore, starts at negative 11. With a square bracket, because it does include negative 11. It stops up here. What is this point? Well, this would be 3 times negative 1 plus 1. That would be negative 3 plus 1. That's negative 2. So it stops up there at negative 2. And that gets a parenthesis because it doesn't include the negative 2. And then this range jumps up to here, where it starts again at 0 and goes to infinity. So this is the range. And this is how we can refine this graph. Again, just a little bit. If you want to refine this graph, this is the point negative 1, negative 2. All right, hopefully that helps. Um, have fun graphing.